Welcome to Startup Pack. Today we'll be continuing on our Coding for Entrepreneurs series. This is a series for entrepreneurs who want to learn how to code through some very simple principles and projects. This series will help anyone start writing code and jumpstart their business. It's important today for any entrepreneur to learn at least the basic principles of coding in order to understand and collaborate with the development team as well as to create their very own business applications or to jump in and make modifications to an existing application. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Tomlinson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go ahead and dig in today. Now, today we're going to be using learning about using ASP.NET, .NET Core with SignalR with Blazor. Now, I'm going to be honest, I actually haven't used Blazor in any production applications. Actually, I don't know of anybody who's ever used Blazor in a production application, but we're going to dig in and learn a little bit about it today. Um, it's kind of fascinating. I found it kind of interesting to look at and kind of neat. I'm not sure I'd actually ever use it, but this tutorial teaches the basic of building a real-time application using SignalR with Blazor. Now, the overall concept of Blazor is Blazor allows you to build C -sharp, uh, build front-end code with C Sharp instead of JavaScript. It then compiles down into uh, code that the browser can use. Um, and so it's going to use SignalR to build a hub, just like we have before. And then it's also going to add SignalR service to an endpoint for the SignalR hub, and then add Razor components for code. So if that's not confusing, confusing we have Razor components for code for the chat, and then we have a Blazor. Uh, so it's kind of interesting on what parts are Blazor and what parts are Razor. So let's go ahead and dig in and take a look at our app here. So make sure you pull latest on our uh, startup pack GitHub repository. Um, this is the Signal R. We're going to go over the Blazor app with Signal R today. Um, now, you know, just as with usual, we're going to start off with our program.cs. So the first thing that you'll do is, uh, if you're setting this up from scratch, um, I would really recommend downloading the code, this uh, sample code, and go from there. But if you're downloading it, then you would want to pick the Blazor server app. Um, what we're going to do then, and we're going to actually break this down to a couple of different parts because our code sample in, in number seven here actually goes through a couple of different apps. And today we're just going to cover one of them. We're just going to cover the chat app. And so the parts that you'll want to do is you'll uh, start by selecting the Blazor si Server Signal R app project and select Manage the NuGet packages and get that all set up. Once you have your NuGet packages set up, as with all of our other projects, you're going to want to start with adding a hub. And so you start with adding the hub, and once you add the hub, you'll uh, then want to make sure that you um, set up all of your uh, different service. Um, so you'll add the SignalR hub here, and once we add the SignalR hub, you can see that it looks very similar to all the ones that we've done the last two days, uh, you know, using SignalR with both JavaScript and TypeScript. And so um, I don't think the hub changes at all. Um, I think we kept it the same between all of our projects. The next one is you're going to add the services and endpoint for the SignalR hub. So you're going to go to your program CS file, and this is where we will add um, these sections here. So you're going to add the Razor pages, uh, server side Blazor, and then add our weather forecast service. This will be for a different one of the pages that we won't really be covering much today. And then we're going to talk. Uh, and then we're going to add this response compression stream uh, with Octet stream. So. Um, we're then, uh, so this uses the response compression middleware at the top of the processing pipeline configuration. Between the endpoints for mapping the Blazor hub and the client side fallback, add an endpoint for the hub, which is our uh, chat hub. So we're going to map our chat hub here. And the host is one for that we'll use uh, for fallback to a page in a, in a different uh, part of this that we'll cover in the next couple of days. So um, now we need to add the Razor components. And so we're going to go to our pages, and we're going to add our index.razor. And we're going to go through some of the part of it. And we're going to replace the markup co uh, code with this code that we've got here. We're going to go through some of these different parts. So you can see that we're creating the base uh, HTML for the page. So we have our regular button. We have an input, uh, which you can see it does, uses the keyword bind. We also have the user input. So we have the um, both the user and the message input. And then we have our button. Um, the next part of this is that we have an unordered list that we'll continue to add more messages to. So as you uh, continue to hit message, it will add to this UL list. 
Now, the next part is you can see that we have the code, uh, which obviously looks really interesting to see right in the middle here, uh, in the middle of our page. So we see this at, at code, which is the keyword then to then break into our C-sharp code. Um, you can see it also uses our usings up at the top, as well as any of the injects and the implements. So um, all of these parts then break down into using the Blazor page. So you can see this is where it actually is... Um, Working, uh, working with the um, the hub connector uh, with the URL, and so it, this is where it's mapping, setting the absolute URL to the chat hub. Uh, you can see that we can receive messages. Uh, this is where, when we receive the message, it's mapping those messages and invoking the async call. And then are also where it, uh, the hub connection starts to wait for the connections. We also see the send command, which is mapped to when the uh, send button is clicked, so the on click we'll fire the send command. And so we can actually put breakpoints right in here. And if the connection hub is not null, then it would await and do the send async for the send message. So um, we can check where if it's connected and also then the dispose to dispose of the connections as the page is left. So let's go ahead and fire this up. Um, so this is the adding all the razor component. And then so to run the app, we're gonna click on this. And this is all the code that we need in order to run this small app here. So I'm going to drag this over to this screen. So you can see our fancy razor page. We're going to go through the counter and the fetching data uh, in our uh, code samples tomorrow. So I'm going to set up two of these. And the first one I'll say is Spencer. And the next one is hello world. Of course, that has to be always the first thing that we send. Now you can see that on send, you know, it's checking if our connection hub is not null which in this case it's not. So it's going to go ahead and do a send async of the message with the user input and the message input. Uh, this is going to then um, hit to our connections on the hub where it receives the message. So this is the send message and the receive message. It'll step through this, uh, takes the encoded message and adds it and then invokes the, invokes the async for the state has changed. And we can see that it now steps through and it's adding this to the page. So you actually see it adding to this front end side of the code, which is really fascinating. So even as I stepped through, I was just hitting F10 as I stepped through that. You can see then it walked through and actually added these messages to our UI. Kind of crazy to see the C sharp debugger running in our UI code. I'm not used to that. Then we let it run and you can see that it added to both of our uh, chat apps that had subscribed to this. Um, you know, we could see it hit this backend chat hub as well. If we uh, need to, uh, you know, we can see where it, it hits the receive message. So we'll run through this one more time. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and fire one on the other side here. So now we're going to say Bob says goodbye, cruel world. And I can't type. So we can see that it's going to go and uh, do the send async, and it'll send the message. We see it hit the send message. This sends the message to the receive message, which then hits the receive message. So we can see the async happening. You saw it bounce back and forth between these two classes because it was running fully asynchronous at that point. And it adds the message. Well, I'm going to hit F10. You can see it add to these. Uh, so it added then to that to that front end again. So this is all the code that you need to be able to build a very simple chat app. So we have our signal, our hub in this, obviously very simple. We have the front side code, which you can step through using C sharp, which is very interesting. And then we also have our inline at code, which then can contain all of it. So using basically three files, we can create a whole chat app using signal R and uh, using blazer. And so, Interesting stuff with the blazer. We were going to dig into this a little bit more, so we'll actually use the same sample in tomorrow's video. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and uh, tune in tomorrow to catch this. Also make sure that you are getting yourself uh, set up with your clean router and clean phones. Make sure that your kids are being protected online with their clean phones so that you can keep track with your parent app on exactly what they're doing and you can monitor all of their traffic, set which apps they're allowed to use, and set which times they're allowed to even use which apps. So um, anyways, make sure you grab those latest, and we will catch you guys next time.